So pretty much I on a test, I give it to you just like this. I do tend to say, what's the claim? Because that's where you start. So in this case, what well, what is the claim? Oh, shoot. Turn that. Can you turn the lights down a bit? Yeah, the mean is less than 11.2. You'll never, ever see your sample information in these statements because you make your hypothesis before you even go out and take a sample. So this is kind of... Obviously, we're in a classroom, so this is kind of uh, all at once. We're not going to go take a sample and know it's already been taken. But does it make sense? You're going to make a guess before you actually go take a sample to test your guess. So you're never going to see the sample number showing up in part A, your, your hypotheses. Does that make sense? You have, unless you have ESP, which some of you guys might, actually. I don't know. Still freaking out. So which one is the HO or H1? Which is greater than or equal? Does it, yeah, does it have an equal sign? Yeah. No. Does the claim have an equal sign? No. So which one is it going to be? H1. H1. And then the opposite of less than is? Greater than or equal to 11. Now, if I was a smarter person, which I will definitely let you know I'm not, I would have made an example here that was a two-tailed test. I want you to realize the claim is not always H1. Why was this claim H1? Because the claim does not have equal sign. Equal sign. So if I would have said, uh, I think that it's equal to 47, then obviously that would be mu equal 47. That's freaking HO. The claim would be HO. The language I would use later would be reject the claim or fail to reject the claim, that kind of language. You see, so I just happened to make some examples where all the claim was H1. Doesn't have to be H1. If the claim has equal, then it's HO. Beautiful. If the claim has an equal sign of some kind, if I would have said at most, well, that's less than or equal to. At least, well, that's greater than or equal to. If I had the claim like that, it would be HO. And H1 would be the opposite of that. You with me? Okay. So this is definitely a how many tail test? Two. One tail. And it's, at, it's less than, so it's going to be down there somewhere. Uh, Z or T scores? T scores. Why? Because S, because the sample standard deviation is known. Yes, yeah, sigma not known. Only S. So what's number one actually then? Yeah, N greater than 30, normally enough. You always got to say those two things. Uh, why is it normally enough? And which standard deviation do we know? If you leave one of those out, S, obviously you're going to lose the point. I love it. So in this one, we know S. So we got to use T scores. So make that point one, like I said. So I know I want to use a T score. I know alpha is 0.01. I know it's a one tail. I know the degrees of freedom is 44, 44 which is the next evil part that Jeff did. And you're all like, this is new, man. What the hell? It's too bad. It's not in the... Not in the so anytime, anytime that it's not in the chart, 44 is not here, you always go the more conservative route, which is to go down to 40. Because that makes the score bigger. That would make it harder to pass the test, right? You always go more, go more conservative. So I'm going to use a 2.423. So if you use 2.412, I understand why you did that. I'm semi-okay with that, but really it should be 2.423, be more conservative. How are we doing? And it's just because the chart doesn't list them all, right? Because you see how they start to not change much down here? So you don't have to list all of them. They get pretty close enough to just kind of skip around. So I want to use 2.423. Since it's here, it's negative. And can you say it in words? If T star... It's less than, less than negative 2.423. So we can, we can kind of show you that in. Then we can reject the. We make it work easier. There. We reject. H O. Support. H1. So, of course, if it's greater than or equal to, we fail to reject H1. Oh, fail to support H1. Right? We just fail all around. Well, so part D. 
and is 40. And of course, nowadays on the test, I say Z star or T star, whichever is appropriate. I just used to always say Z star because I didn't want to give anything away. Yeah. I'm also just wondering why the, uh, the degrees of freedom is 44. It's always one less than the sample size. It kind of goes back to, remember the old standard deviation had an N minus one at the bottom? It's kind of the same idea. So this T scar, uh, T scar, T star, it's always my data minus the mean we're assuming is true, the 11.2, right? It's always my data minus that mean from the claim. And I need to change my standard deviation, right? It was 2.34. Divided by square root of 45. 0.3488. Do it again. 0.3488. I love it. 349 is good too. Right? Negative. How are we doing so far? Negative 2.29. I love that non answer. Okay. <laughs> Go on. So then, what do you get there? 10.4. Negative 2.29. Negative 2.29. Mm-hmm. Okay. So right there, without doing the p-value or anything, I can actually answer the question. Just the p-value seems like an unnecessary next step, but that's actually the more important number to report. But I can see the answer already. Did we make it far enough away? Yeah. No. We had to make it at least this far, and we're here at negative 2.29. Yeah. We did not make it far enough away. We didn't make it past the benchmark. So we what, what did we do? We not found. We have not. Good. We evidence fail. We fail. <laughs> Period. <laughs> to reject HO, we fail to support H1. Those are actually the same thing written twice. They just they mean the same thing. Oops, sorry. Zoomed in too far. We fail to reject HO. We fail to say the null is wrong, so we fail to say the alternate is right. Real quick word about the p-value. Let me see if you guys can get this. If you don't get this, it's okay. It's not a huge deal. I don't care too much about t-score p-values, but I do care about them a little bit. So we're using um, 40 right now, right, to be conservative, and we got a t-score of 2.29. So can you see 2.29? So where, which uh, two scores on that row has 2.29 between them? It's uh, 2.29 is between these two, right? Yeah. You also, see what I'm saying? Wouldn't 2.29 be between those two? Yeah. Now, if you follow that up, that means the p-value is in between 0.01 and 0.025. You can only ever give a range for t-scores if you're using this chart with me. With, with uh, technology, it can figure out the p-value for whatever t-score. But for us, we got this freaking chart because your teacher's crazy. But uh, you can only give a, a range. If you got that, awesome. So all I did was went back to the row that was my degrees of freedom. It was actually 44, so the best I could do is 40. Then I found where my 2.29, my actual T star is, it's between these two. Mm -hmm. So I look back up to the probabilities that those represent, 0.01 to 0.025. Somewhere in between those two values. And my benchmark was 0.01. That's why it didn't work. It's, it's too big to fit in there, in that little tail. All right, so if you didn't quite get that, I'll do it one more time at some point in the future. I'm not too concerned. So here the p-value is between 0.025 and 0.01. 0.01 up to 0.025. The p-value is somewhere in the middle. So what's the conclusion here? We got our quick statement. This is not good enough for a conclusion. Which one is my claim? H1. H1. So therefore, I want to use this language. Everybody's always freaking out about what language to use in your conclusion. Look at what your claim is and pick that language. Claim is H1. I'm going to say we have not found sufficient evidence to support the claim that blah, blah, blah. blah. So I fail. Okay, so we have not found sufficient evidence to support the claim that what? 
the mean time relief has decreased from 11 to 2. That mean relief decreased. time decreased from 11 has decreased from 11 .2. from 11.2. So then I would not be able to say on my commercials, I could not say clinical trials have shown that the mean relief time is, has been decreased. And you hear that kind of thing, maybe not that exact language, but you hear that kind of thing in clinical trials that were shown. That You hear that all the time. That's because they did clinical trials and they found evidence that it was better. That's why they're allowed to say it. People are going to come in and say, let me see your evidence. Looks good. Thank you. I couldn't make a commercial that said that. Because I didn't find evidence. So I'm like, shit. That sucks. Yeah. So these, these they give us positives of this. This is like the opposite. Like if we're doing it below the mean, this would be the opposite. Like it would be negative. Yeah. yeah. So you just, when you're looking up the p value, you just think about the, just the number part. You don't worry about the sign. You still find what it's between. All right. So that is so definitely plenty. We've actually done, just to let you know, section 8.3 is this whole process with z-scores. Section 8.4 is this whole process with t-scores. Section 8.5, we still need to talk about that's the process for testing claims about percentages. Same steps. Section 8.2 is kind of like uh, all the parts together mishmash. So we've basically done 8.2 through 8.4 today. Holy crap. All right. Have a good break.